This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. Approaching 6.53, time to get you ready to take on your Monday and your week ahead with the morning sprint. Emily Bloom is in for Mark Peterson with news of a wet, windy day today, but better news down the road. Let's get, though, first over to Destiny Richards, who is live talking about a construction project affecting lots of you in northwest Spokane. That's right. This morning we've been talking about the closure of North TJ Meenock Drive, and this is closing because of not only the resurfacing of the road, but also storm water management and pipes that are being installed in the area. Let's get you over to the map that shows what detours you'll need to take. If you're heading north, you'll need to take Pettit Drive to Maxwell Avenue or Ash to Maple Street, and drivers heading south will be able to access the bridge via the Pettit Drive interchange. You can find more information about this overall project on KXLY.com. Another construction project set to begin today. Crews will start work on a new railroad bridge on West Euclid, north of Airway Heights. The current bridge was deemed unsafe about four years ago. It's taken so long to replace it because it is not owned by the county. The bridge is set to open in September. Breaking news, we are learning some new details this morning about a child rape case in Grant County. Warden police started an investigation into alleged sexual misconduct between a 22-year-old woman and a 15-year-old Warden High School student. A police report says it started in 2021 when the victim was 13 and the woman, Andrea Campos Hernandez, was 21. The victim also said he and Hernandez shared explicit photos and videos with each other besides having sex. Hernandez was employed as a child care provider when the sheriff's office found her. She was arrested on suspicion of second degree child rape. An update to the University of Idaho murder investigation. Unsealed documents detail what prosecutors were looking for as they were searching for evidence in the early stages of the case before Brian Koberger was listed as a suspect. It includes search warrants to access information from Amazon about the possible purchase of a K-Bar knife and a K-Bar U.S. Marine Corps knife sheath. A knife sheath matching that description was found at the crime scene. Police say it contained a match of Koberger's DNA. Another warrant was for access to Apple iCloud accounts of all four victims. Investiga investigators also wanted permission to search the victim's cash app accounts, as well as more information on the DoorDash deliveries Anna Kernodal received around the time investigators believe they were killed. And we are going to have a wet start to your work week and widespread rain throughout the day today on and off and the heaviest rainfall going to be in those afternoon hours. That does mean mountain snow. Sunshine will be returning by Tuesday and then by the tail end of this week, we are warming into those 50s. President Biden delivered remarks less than an hour ago on how the U.S. will maintain a steady banking system. He says no taxpayer money would be used to bail out Silicon Valley Bank as U.S. authorities try to contain the damage from its collapse, the second largest failure of a financial institution in U.S. history. And new this morning, HSBC will take over the U.K. arm of the failed Silicon Valley Bank in an attempt to avert a potential banking crisis. In Redmond, Washington, a suspected stalker broke into a podcaster's home, then shot and killed her and her husband and then himself. The couple had called police before in December and again in mid-January to report that the man was stalking the podcaster. She and her husband filed paperwork for a temporary protection order against this man because he had reportedly listened to her podcast, then began communicating with the podcaster. But police say it escalated with him repeatedly calling her her husband, even her friends. The FAA is investigating an incident in which a Lewiston airplane had to make an emergency landing late Saturday morning. This is that plane. This Cessna 172 had to make an emergency landing on a golf course after losing power in the air. The plane's wingtip struck a tree upon landing, but that was the extent of the damage. There were two people on board the plane. When this happened, neither one of them was hurt. Millions in California are bracing for another atmospheric river event that's expected to take aim on the state today. People there have been dealing with widespread rain and massive flooding in Monterey County where a levee was breached. For now, California officials are reminding people to avoid travel and to stay clear of several waterways. 
Authorities say three women living in Texas crossed into Mexico on February 24th to sell clothes at a flea market and have not been seen since. Family members say they have not heard from those three women and are concerned about their safety. State police and the FBI are investigating. Some A-listers and some newcomers took home a coveted Oscar trophy last night. Many of those nominated for the Academy Awards were first-timers, 16 out of the 20 acting nominees up for their first awards, and competition was tough. Coverage on the biggest moment from the Oscars is coming up in just a few minutes on Good Morning America. We'll be back with weather after this.